lucky man. I wish I was the travel editor of this magazine. Where do you want to go now? I'd like to go back to Canada, Harold. Why Canada? Well, there's a terrific story in Manitoba. You know, it's always been a, a great wilderness area. But in addition to that, they've de been developing some family-type vacation facilities. And the entertainment story is really amazing in that part of the world. I think it'd make a good story. How would you get up there? Well, last time I went, I drove up. But uh, this time, I'd like to fly. I could make it in an afternoon. Once I got there, I got some friends who could set up some interesting side trips. What do you think? Sounds fine. Have a good time. Good. Consider me on my way. In the past 20 years or so, I've traveled more than the distance of two round trips to the moon, looking for stories to interest my vacation-minded readers. But I've found that some of the best places to visit aren't all that far away. Northwest Orient Airlines, flight 437, from Minneapolis, St. Paul, and Chicago, with connections from Miami and New York, is now arriving. Passengers after clearing Canada customs. Herb, how are you? Sure, good to see you. Really, it is marvelous. Jane, how are you? Nice to see you. Mm -hmm. You're looking well. Fun to have you back. It's great to be here. Oh, how was New York? Now, I must great. admit, I don't always get girls hugging and kissing me wherever I go. But then Manitobans are famous for their hospitality. Herb and Jane have been good friends of mine for a long time now. Herb followed through as he said he would. After giving me time to get cleaned up at one of Winnipeg's new motor hotels, he and Jane picked me up for a night on the town. We saw some swinging entertainment at the night spots in Manitoba's capital city. The acts ranged from pop singers to a miniature version of the flower drum song. I've got to admit I was pleasantly surprised. didn't surprise me, though, was the good food. Winnipeg is one of the best eating cities I've come across in years. This place specializing in roast beef and steaks is typical of at least a score of really top restaurants. You know, this is a fantastic steak, but every time I come here, I get fantastic is steak. Is it really good? Is it tender? Mar delicious. <laughs> Great. Well, you know, I think it's fun to be able to take you out to a place like this to get a steak instead of having you at home, which, of course, I adore, too. But don't you think it's changed? It has huh? changed tremendously. You know, Dick, we're very proud of our restaurants in Winnipeg. Well, you've got something really to be proud of. By the way, Herb, what do I take along tomorrow besides the camera and the briefcase? Mm, Dick, I think it might be a good idea if you took along your spurs. Spurs? Mm. What would I be doing with spurs? You'll see. <laughs> you just wait and see, boy. You'll know what you do with spurs. <laughs> They didn't get me aboard one of these wild characters. 
I'll take my kicks watching comfortably from the stand. Manitoba has kept alive its real western traditions with a number of rodeos like this one. The big ones are at Morris and Swan River during the summer. I don't think anything in the American West can top them. For Herb and me, one of the biggest thrills was the spectacular chuck wagon race. But deadlines are deadlines, and one caught up with me in Winnipeg. I must say, I've had to bat out my copy in a lot less attractive places. And sitting out here next to the hotel pool gave me a chance to know the sort of people who come up to Manitoba on their vacations. This young lady, I found out, had spent the early afternoon with her mother, shopping for souvenirs and gifts for friends back home, while father caught up on his reading. I'll bet she's still dreaming about some of the things she saw. Unique carvings, some of the world's finest woolens, quality furs from a country that owes its beginnings, at least partly, to the fur trade centuries ago. In Manitoba, there's a lot for women to get excited about. I could understand why the women were so contented, but something else bothered me. After his wife had been shopping, a husband doesn't usually look that happy. At least I don't. At Assiniboia Downs, our friend has been catching up on more than his reading. kinds of ways to enjoy a vacation.
Manitoba has almost 4,000 miles of first-class highways, and Herb and I covered a lot of ground by car. That way, I was able to get the feel of all that wide, unspoiled country so easily reached by road. Not everyone goes by car, of course. Who would when you can find such attractions in a boat? These young people live on the water in the summer. With hundreds of lakes and all these rivers in Manitoba, there's room to flap your arms and throw some spray around. On the drive out to Herb's summer cottage, we were usually right in sight of water and people having fun on or in it. Maybe I'm repeating myself, but it's hard to get over the fact that there's so much space for outdoor fun up here. If you want to water ski, so you water ski. You can swim or boat or fish. You name it and you can do it. And if you like sailing, you just set your canvas and run with the breeze without waiting for the traffic lights to change. How's it going? Oh, great, Herb. Real great. Oh, fine, fine, fine. We're not trying to cover too much ground out here, Dick. Oh, heck no. That's what we're here for. What's on for tomorrow? Well, Dick, you mentioned that you'd like to see some of our historic sites. Now, how about if we go out to Lower Fort Gary tomorrow? Sounds swell. Let's do it. We'll do it. Fine. Sounds. Meanwhile, I can tell you, though, this is a tough place to try and concentrate. Lower Fort Garry is just a few miles north of Winnipeg on the Red River. A modern facsimile of the old riverboat helps maintain the atmosphere of the early 1800s. The stone fort was built by the Hudson's Bay Company in 1831 as a new headquarters for their fur trading operations in the West. The first raw recruits of the Northwest Mounted Police were trained here in the winter of 1873. Today, Lower Fort Garry, in its original setting and with a fine museum, provides a fascinating look at the history of a province settled by so many peoples from all over the world. Herb asked me if I wanted to get a more modern slant on the province, but I was too wrapped up in historic sites to pay much attention right then. Herb has his commercial pilot's ticket, and flying around in his gave me a whole new slant on things.
The International Peace Gardens in southwestern Manitoba at the U.S. border. It's dedicated to the long friendship between the people of Canada and the United States. In our troubled world, it's a welcome change of pace. By lunchtime, we were at the Brandon Fair. It's an exciting agricultural exhibition in the heart of western Manitoba. Betty B. Porter is right up there. Betty B. Porter is right The fabulous harness racing alone would have been worth the visit, even if I hadn't been traveling free. Look at those horses take the turn. Horse show was another highlight of the Brandon Fair. Herb's plane really got us around the Manitoba countryside. But sometimes I wished I weren't on assignment, so I could have enjoyed the leisurely life of these campers below. Manitoba has more than 250 campsites scattered conveniently all along the main vacation routes, and more are being built every year. There are facilities for the family with tent or trailer, and accommodations for visitors who are just picnicking along the way. Well, that sure looks good. Now there's a boy who believes in catching his own lunch. Because it's a province in the Canadian Midwest, some people get the idea that Manitoba is one giant flat plain from one end to the other. Well, it just plain isn't. From the air, I could see that the countryside formed a colorful pattern of wooded hills and rich, fertile valleys.
Flying further north, we came to Clear Lake in Riding Mountain National Park. Like Falcon Lake and the beaches on Lake Winnipeg, this recreation center has been designed primarily for family fun. Sometimes it's just as pleasant to get away from the kids for a while and play a quiet round of golf. Even nice kids like my two. Ah, well, we really covered ground today. Yeah, I've forgotten how big this country really is. You know, I think we should make an early night of it tonight because we've got a couple of busy days ahead of us. Oh, yeah, the Flin Flon Trout Festival. Yeah. That should be a ball. That, that should be, really. I'm looking forward to it. I think it might be one of the high spots of the trip. I hear they party from one end of the day to the next. <laughs> well, the, those northern Manitoban people, you know, they really enjoy a good time. From the symbolic figure of Flint Abity Flonaton, right down to the most recently arrived new native, the people of Flin Flon really know how to show you a good time. The Flin Flon Trout Festival turned out to be a combination family get-together and sportsman's outing, the like of which I've never seen before. got the idea of Canada as a cold place. Well, even though we were more than 600 miles north of Winnipeg, Herb and I had to change into tropical clothes. Even the Royal Canadian Mounted Police wear a light uniform up here in the summer. The warm weather didn't seem to bother the contestants in the flower packing contest. The winner carried 600 pounds. 600 pounds, my falling arches. <laughs> Baking banner, a sourdough bread, is another skill that comes from the old traditions of the North. Of all the events, I think I got the biggest charge out of the canoe races. Manitoba's various canoe teams, made up of fur trappers, woodsmen, and outdoor enthusiasts, have been winning races and giving exhibitions all over North America. Canoe racing in northern Manitoba is a real test of skill and endurance. The crews travel 150 miles over rivers and lakes and making portages in competition for a winner's purse of $1,000. Me? I wouldn't try it for a million. But this was the real winner at the Flin Flon Trout Festival. A 42-pound lake trout. Right then and there, I made up my mind that this trip to Manitoba was going to mean more to me than just a writing assignment. Yeah, they 
really whipped me around. Incidentally, Harold, uh, I'd like to take about four days of vacation time and stick around a little bit. Yeah, I'll be back in plenty of time for the Greenland job. Yeah, uh, well, I'd like to do a little fishing, you know. Yeah, sure. Well, I'll be back on Friday, and I'll be in the office on Monday. Right, old Harold. Thanks a lot. You too, boy. Bye-bye. Friendly people and beautiful surroundings are two things that help make a perfect vacation, and I found them both in Manitoba.